Welcome everybody. I'm so happy you're here. We are going to have so much fun tonight. Get ready. This is going to be the most exciting night ever. So I want this is I'm Leah Richheimer and I'm your host tonight. I'm going to walk you through. We're going to go boom boom. This is going to be very, very fast moving, but I want to start with a story. Okay. So the story I want to tell you is about the governor of Texas. So the governor of Te Texas is taking his wife for a, they're going on a long needed vacation. He's been governor for a long time, haven't taken a long vacation. So they're going down and they're driving in their Cadillac and they're having a great time and they're animated talking, chatting. And he realizes that he's got his oils down. So he says, okay, he gets off at the next exit. He goes to a gasoline thing and he needs full service because his oil, he needs oil. Fine. So they pull into full service and the guy comes around and starts, you know, taking his order. And his wife, the governor of Texas, who's been animated and happy the entire time, starts, you know, picking at her shoes and picking at the carpet. She doesn't lift her head for the entire time they're in the gas station. So they get back on the road and the governor of Texas, he says to her, let me guess what was going on back at that gas station. You were engaged before we were married. Isn't that right, dear? And she said, yeah, that, that's true. And he said, and let me guess, that guy who was giving you full service, that guy was your, your former fiance. Is that right? And she says, oh my goodness, that's unbelievable. You, you nailed it, you went right on the head. And she, he said, let me guess something else. You were think, sitting there thinking, the whole time we were in that gasoline station, you were thinking, oh my goodness, if I had married that man, I would now be the wife of a guy living in nowhere, Texas, who was a gasoline attendant. Isn't that what you were thinking, dear? And she says, uh, well, actually, no, that's not what I was thinking. He said, really, what were you thinking? He's driving along, what were you thinking? She said, I was thinking, oh my goodness, if I had married that man, he would now be the governor of Texas. So ladies, what you want to learn from today, by the end of tonight, you will know how to have the power to create the future with God's help. You know, you'll be able to create that. You'll have a lot of tools where this is small steps to greatness and everybody's going to tell us their small steps to greatness. So I want to start, I'm going to go through we, uh, our first guest. Should I tell you who that? Okay. I'll drum roll who the first guest is. Lori Palatin. Okay. So uh, now you're on the edge of your seat waiting for her. I'm going to go through just three important things. A lot of logistics. They said, okay, these, you have to cover this before we, we have our first guest. So I'm going to go over them very quickly with you. Number one, the format. So the format of tonight is different than maybe, and it's not like one lecture, one lecture, whatever, it's interviews. And it's the exact same week for the ladies talk show we do every Wednesday, we have a interview thing. So I'm going to be talking back and forth. And here's what you have to understand you while the show is going like right now, start typing clickety click start or thumbs, I guess the millennials, whatever thumbs, you know, start typing and getting your questions because we will answer them live and we have Sarit Rubenstein in the house. Hello. So, so Sarit is, you'll hear her on me. Say hello, Sarit. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, We're so excited. <laughs> yeah, great. So Sarit is going to, she's getting from all of the, you know, from daily giving. And if you want, if you have a question, here's where you type it. Let me tell you, it's Haviva at dailygiving.org. So can you put it up to somebody if they have it? It's Haviva, H-A-V-I-V-A at dailygiving.org. And you can type in whatever question you want for any of the people who are gonna come. Sarit is gonna be reading them through and presenting them back. And also we have people on Instagram and Facebook and Torah anytime. So when those come in, there'll be a lot of questions from everywhere, but go ahead and start typing. Okay, that was the format. Just wanted to get that clear on anybody. Oh, also we do have a couple of pre-tapes. So some of the speakers we had to do earlier because it's four o'clock in the morning, Israel time. Thank you very much. So that just so you know, so some of them will be pre-taped, most of them aren't. Okay, so then what else do I have to tell you? Okay, at the end of the show, um, we have a very big surprise for you. So after everyone, after all the interviews, at the end of the show, we're going to have a group chat. That means all the speakers are going to come on the screen and we're going to have, you know, going to get questions in and Sarit's going to give them in and you, it's going to be like this total interactive, totally fun, like nothing you ever saw. It's going to be awesome fun. So that's at the end. We're also going to announce the winner of the Apple Watch and we also have a surprise raffle that you can enter, enter at the end of the show. We'll tell you all about that at that time. Okay, last thing, third point is during the show, we're going to be announcing the names of people who sign up to Daily Giving today. Like as you, the show goes and you come in, Sarit's going to say, Betsy from New York and this one from South Africa, where she's going to announce everybody as you guys come in. Um, also, you can, during the show, any time that you think, okay, 
I want to, uh, you know, we're, this is a content rich show, but it's also, we're trying to get daily and you learn more about it. Now we've got a, a debut of an amazing video to show you later. Uh, it's a very short three minute video. Um, so, but the, anytime that you are watching this, you can click uh, and donate. It opens up a new window. You're not, no FOMO, no fear of missing out. You can sign up for daily giving during the entire show. And the more we do in one show, this kind of, not a marathon, but you know, we're gonna try and get as many people uh, as we possibly can. So, um, okay, let's, that's it. I'm going to, so you have met Sarit and she's gonna be asking questions. Send them in now because I'm gonna call Lori Palatnik up and she's, and she's gonna come on the show. And meanwhile, you can be asking Lori questions. So start typing and get yours into Sarit. Okay, so. Lori Palatnik, yummy, yummy. Besides being a yummy, yummy person, she's an international speaker. She speaks all over the place and every, you know, she can get mobs and mobs of people. She also starts moment, started Momentum. And I think she got brought 35,000 people to Israel. So some crazy, she's just an amazing human being. And we're very, very happy. We'd love to welcome you on the show. So come on, Lori, yay, there we go. Okay, fantastic. So, okay, we, we dive very deep, very quickly. Okay, so I'm just gonna start and throw it right at you. You, you okay, listen- doke. Okay, Let's fine. Go. Okay, fine. So we want to know what is small steps to greatness? What does it mean? What is what? First of all, what's greatness? Because we got to know, you know, like, what is what are we if we're here and that's greatness or maybe, you know, wherever we are that we want to grow there. What does greatness mean? And, and how do you achieve it? In, and what are small steps to greatness? Well, real greatness is realizing one's potential. And we none of us are doing it. And all of us are held back because there's a, a foundation that we must stand on first. And that's the foundation of dreams. We are a nation of dreamers. When we were young, we, we had dreams. What happened? Did we grow up or did we give up? Wow. We stop our dreams. Daily giving was a dream. Leah, you called me years and years ago. You tracked me down to talk about your dream and you wanted help with your dream. Momentum started in 2008 with eight women from the Washington DC area with a dream to unlock the power of Jewish women in order to change the world. And now, like you said, tens of thousands of women later, but it begins with dreams. God can't get you there unless you know where you want to go. First, you have to dream. Wait, wait, say that again. That was so gorgeous. God, say that again. That was too gorgeous. God, God can't, get, can't you get you there unless you know where you want to go. If you don't know where you're going in your marriage, when you're walking to the chuppah, you're walking with a dream of what this could be. When, when you have a child, you, it's a dream of, of, of the potential of this child and where you want that child to be. But if you, if you forget because life happens, and we forget what marriage is about or what that dream was. And again, we can give up because we have fears. When I started, when we had this idea in 2008, again, with this idea of, of taking women from all over the world, Jewish women who are very disconnected from their Jewish identity and bring them to Israel for an eight day transformational experience and then a one year follow up, I have to tell you that it really was just an idea and just a dream. And when I came back, we, we met in Utah because one of the eight women owns a gorgeous place in Utah. And we came up with this idea. When I came back, I got a phone call just before I walked into the door. Sometimes, did you ever have something happen? And you, it's so significant. You even remember where you were. I'm standing on my front porch in Rockville, Maryland. And my friend, Barry Feld, called me from Cleveland. She goes, hey, what's going on? I go, I just went away to Utah. And with these, and we were, there were eight of us and we came up with this idea. It's kind of like a birthright for mothers and take secular Jewish women. And they're, they're going to influence their, there'll be mother, they'll influence their families. And she said to me, Lori, just don't get in Hashem's way. Don't get in God's way. Because that's what happens, Leah. We get in the way of our own dreams. And we are limited people. Well, who am I to do this? Who am I to imagine this? Who am I? We are limited, so but if you I, ask God to be part of it, anything can happen. God can make anything happen, but it starts with us. It starts with our dream. So can I just ask you, because this is really too complicated. Like, in other words, how do you, 
it's like you have this dream and then putting into step-by-step actions, you know, we, we, we're getting in flooded with questions. Okay, hold on. Just wait one second. Hold on a second. So let me ask my question first. Um, how, you know, it's like you have a dream and then actually yeah. putting it into action and doing step-by-step mm-hmm. that just is too, in the too hard basket. It's like, I can't do it. So how do you transition from dream to making an, it, it actually happen? You take one step. Nakshon ben Amina Dav had to walk into the sea before it split. He, can I tell you, part of dreams and part of living your potential is, being, is knowing who you are and where you're going. You don't have to be there yet, but at least you're pointed in the right direction and you're real with it. I have a very close friend who lives in the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, some of you know her, Pamela Kleiman. So she never, hardly ever leaves Israel and she never leaves for the holidays for the Chagim, but she had to leave to be with her family in the United States and she wasn't gonna be there for Pesach. And I'm on the phone with her before Pesach and Leah, she's like, I hear her saying like, clean this and do this. And go, I, go, I go, Pamela, what are you doing? You're not home, why are you cleaning for Pesach? You're not gonna be there. You only have to clean one room and then you can leave. She said, Lori, if Mashiach comes during Pesach, I have to get back here and my house has to be Pesachic. Leah, that's freedom. Freedom, that's freedom. You know who you are, you know where you're going. And if you, and then Hashem will get you there. Wow, that's absolutely, okay, let's take the questions. (laughs) They're coming, okay, Suri, give me the first. Okay, so we have, firstly, by the way, Leah, you you were saying that we're going to, as people are donating, we're going to read them off. We're already getting so many people oh, that are sending things in. So just heads up, I'm not going to be able to get to everyone because I really want the questions to be, you know, the main thing. So okay. we have um, Sarah, um, Sarah Mary Goldman asked, obviously, we're all very busy. So what can we do that's a mitzvah to fill up, if we do have any free time, what would be something that she would say would help us reach greatness? So I have a question. Thank you. Everybody else, keep typing, typing, bring them on in. So so many years ago, I had an opportunity to, I would got involved with somebody who like had a female dance company and she didn't have a dancer to get across the border. And I filled in because I was an aerobics instructor. It was many, many years ago. And suddenly she wanted me to go to another city to dance. And my husband was like, hold on, what's going on? So Hashem gives you certain talents and skills and certain opportunities. So because we are married, a lot of us are married and a lot of us have kids and you only have a certain amount of time, again, for things outside of the practical. So he asked, he called up our rabbi, Rabbi Noah Weinberg of blessed memory. And he said, what should Lori do? Cause, cause I can write or, or I can speak or I can fundraise or I could dance. Like, what should I be doing? And he said, Lori should do what gives her the most pleasure. Cause if you start, would take a step towards something that gives you pleasure, oh, yes. then you're going to put your energies into it. Like, and, 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 and it, it, you're going to have much more momentum. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Okay. We, we, oh, God, so, so, by the way, tied into that, Lori, because it's such a perfect opening, is I, I had somebody on Instagram who's asking, she's struggling with the fact that she has to work when her real job is to take care of the home, her husband and her children. She feels like this year, especially during COVID, they somehow managed, even with her being unemployed. And she just feels like, do I want to go back to work? No. But how can I convince my husband that this is really what I want to do is being home and being a mother? Well, first of all, conversations with husbands is very much about timing. (laughs) It's not just what you're going to talk about. It's when you're going to talk about it. You have to ask Hashem to ask God to give you the right moment, whether you're having a conversation with your husband or with a child, you want that significant moment where it's just the right time and that he should give, Hashem should give you the right words to talk about what do you want and why do you want it? You have to have thought about it first. So you, you, you know, it says in Perky Avod, like, oh, who is wise? The one who sees the result. Like, where do you want your kids to be? And now rewind, like, where do you want them to be in like, 10, 20 years, who do you want standing up under the chuppah with them? Now rewind and make your choices about should I be home or should I switch schools? Are like, you saying reverse engineer it? Like you think of what, I didn't understand the periphery of this. You're saying that, that you think, somebody who thinks of what the result is going to be and then work, okay, to get here, I have to work backwards like that. Exactly. You, I, 
I, that's a skill though. Know, I don't, can you just know all me? that skill like instantly? How do you have that skill? That's so hard. Well, first of all, people know me as a very public figure. I was a stay at home mother for the first 13 years and slowly, slowly I started going out slowly. And it was very hard for me to stay home. It's really a little against my nature, but I never resent, I never ever, ever regretted staying home and being there with my children at those important times. And we did go without. We went without, we had cars that were like held together with duct tape, okay? And we didn't have family vacations, but I, we were, I was home with them and, and loving them because who, there, there are times where you have to know what's best for you, your marriage, your family, your children. And again, where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? And just like when somebody comes to me and they'll say like, do I, do I, well, what should I do in terms of like, should I have another child or not? Like people literally ask me, like, I don't know. And I want to, my husband does. And I said, no one ever regrets having another oh my god Leo, we need another mother. show i know i know oh, she's so god. yummy I mean, we could do that let's just do the whole show with laurie okay but yeah, yeah i could talk to you forever <laughs> uh, we have to go because we've got to get move on and please everyone forgive me you're gonna everyone's gonna be so mad at me because i'm gonna be cutting off their favorite people but this is they give me an impossible job to do i've got to cut you up this is like awful anyway we love you thank you so much for being I'll here i'll see today. you at the end right at the We're end you'll be at the, the group end. chat the group chat Mwah. but Leo, while you're getting the next one ready let me just read off two or three names that came in okay um we've got a new yorker reno bromowitz we love new yorkers bronx sephora sharp uh london sh um mm -hmm. west orange fran friedman and spring valley malky perkowitz that's awesome thank you sarit keep them coming keep typing your questions in and keep registering and uh becoming a daily giver uh, it's, it's so awesome and you'll learn more a little bit about what what, what they do oh wait glory did you want to say a quick thing or is, they're going to kill me say one standing on one foot why do you love daily giving <laughs> Can I tell you that givers are happy people. Givers are happy people. It, 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 takers are happy at the moment. I got what I wanted. But in the long run, givers are happy. And giving is a muscle. And if you exercise every day, just like you exercise any muscle in your body, it grows strong. That's gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you at the group chat at the end. Okay, we have our next guest. I'm going to bring her, and I caught up with her earlier because it's four in the morning there. Um, okay, let's go to the next, um, to Daniel Redoff. Somebody's got to play the video. <laughs> okay. I hope everybody's enjoying everything so far. We have an unbelievable guest coming up next. You know who she is, Daniel Redoff from Peas, Love, and Carrots. Welcome to the show. So thrilled to have you. Okay, so we're... <laughs> We're going to go in very deep, very fast. I want to find out from you. Tell me right now, what are the steps to greatness? What can inspire people so that they can walk away from the show, the power hour, and they can be, you know, their, their best self? So I don't personally like know what the steps to greatness are. All I can say is, is that I am you and you're, you are me. We are regular people. I wake up in the morning and sometimes I'm too tired to get out of bed. Sometimes I don't want to get dressed for the day. Sometimes I don't want to pack lunches. Sometimes I argue with people because I'm in a bad mood for no reason. This is shocking. Uh, shocking news. Shocking. <laughs> okay. Sometimes I don't want to make dinner. And a lot of times I want somebody to bring dinner to me. And um, I think the key to greatness is just not to overthink it. Um, you know, I think when we give ourselves this really far away goal of, I want to be a tzaddik, I want to be a tzaddika, I want to follow in their footsteps, which we should, we should look up to the great people as inspirations. But when we look at that big picture so far away and we say, okay, how do I get to become them? It becomes very overwhelming because we never saw those people as people. We see them as, you know, as a hero, as a role model. We see all of their almost, um, you know, godly emulating qualities. And we want those qualities without recognizing their humanness also. And when you put the humanness piece back in it, you understand that they didn't get there overnight. They got there by being themselves and just taking little baby steps every day. So, you know, I often think instead of looking at this faraway place thinking, I want to be a woman that never speaks Lashon Hara. I do want to be a woman that never speaks Lashon Hara, but that can't be my goal. So my goal today is I want to be a woman today that speaks less Lashon Hara. I want to be a woman today that has more patience with my kid. Of course, I want to be the most patient mother I can be, but today, 
I just want to be a little more patient than maybe I was yesterday. So and to me, is that like are, setting, is that like setting long-term goals or daily goals? Or are you saying, and also what if you have like 10 things you need to work on, then what do you do? You know, like, you're, I, think it's, I think it's setting a long-term dream. Like it gives you a path to walk on, but to get to the end of the path, you have to just take step by step. You, it's not one big leap because one big leap is too far. It's not possible. We need to take step by step. So we okay. need to we've got questions coming in. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, everyone loves you, by the way, Danielle. Okay. Um, so someone asks, when they wake up that way, feeling like I just can't do this today, what do they do at that moment to snap out of it? Oh, that's awesome. You can't, you can't snap out of it. There's no snapping out of, I can't do this today. I have been there and I understand your feeling. There are some days where you actually can't do it. You're not wrong. You can't do it today. But on those days, that is when Emuna and Bitahon come to literally to save the day. Because on the days you can't do it, you turn to Hashem and you say, Hashem, I can't. Please take over and you literally take your struggles and you give them to Hashem. You tell him every single thing that you can't do today. Every single thing that's bothering you, every single thing that's making you sad or upset or holding you back. And you give them to Hashem and you say, Hashem, I can't, I I'm too tired. My shoulders cannot carry this burden anymore. Take it. And Hashem will take you step by step. He will literally come and pick you up. When the minutes and the hours are too long and they seem too arduous, how are you going to get to the next day? You stop thinking about it. Wow, people are crying, Leah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, hold on, I'll take the next question in a second. But I just wanted to ask, is the, you know, it's okay, you're lying in bed now, you're giving it all to Shem. So there's a burden that's lifted emotionally and spiritually. You feel like you've got a partner. You still have to get up and make the lunches. I mean, if you, unless you want the kids all home all day, you know, you still have to do it. Is there a, 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 tr a trick or an idea that you might have that can inspire someone to actually put one foot in front of the other? No. If you really can't do it, some days you don't do it. I, there are, there were definitely days in my life where I just said, I can't make the lunches. And either somebody in my house stood, stepped up and made the lunches or they didn't go to school that day, honestly. Like I just, I mean, if you really hit that rock bottom and you can't do it, you can't do it. Wow. And that's okay also. And I'm a worthy person just because one day I couldn't wake up and make Somebody's lunch. writing that is so powerful because you don't often hear people admit that. Yeah. yeah. That's really powerful. Yeah. It's another thing we always say, you know, leave the dishes in the sink. I know some people are going to email in and say, oh, how can you say that? People need to have a Seder in their life. They need to no, it's fine. It's like, you know, I actually had somebody and they, they, the I mother, actually say I would yeah. keep my kids home from school than leave the dishes in my sink. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, got it. Everyone's got their little, but a woman and her, her, uh, her mother-in-law got off the plane. It was Tuesday. She had many, many kids. Every, the house was flying, whatever. The mother-in-law says, okay, everybody in the bath. And they said, why is it Shabbos? And, like caught redheaded. In other words, she bathed the kids only on Shabbos. And so when the mother-in-law came, you get it? The oh mother-in-law, <laughs> she, she had a lot of kids under, it's like oh, seven wow. under seven. Or okay, Leah, like, I love that woman. I love her. <laughs> right? yeah. There needs to be like a judgment-free zone. Forget the rest of the world in yourself. You need to not judge yourself because life is really, really hard. And when we stop judging ourselves based on all of these outside, outside world preconceptions, then we leave room within ourselves to decide, can I push myself or is this too much for me? And the only way for you to make that decision, can I push myself or is this too much, is to really remove all the outside you know, haziness that infiltrates our brains to let it go and to really think, what can I do? What am I capable of today? Can I push myself? Can I handle this? Because men, oftentimes we do need to push ourselves. That's a reality also, is that we're humans and we have things to do and we do need to, you know, accomplish those things on a daily basis. So we need to know when we can push ourselves and when we can't. And when you have the clarity to know when you can't, you won't ever feel guilty for your decision because you know that it came from inside you. It didn't come from a negative place. It didn't come from a, a too much self-care or too much this. You don't have to worry about that. There's no second guessing because you know. 
because it came from within. You actually couldn't push yourself. We don't have time for any more questions. I know, I know, I know. know. It gave people so much confidence. It's so awesome. Okay, so I just would, just to finish up, I just want you to tell us a little bit about why you are doing, we really appreciate you doing this for Daily Giving, but I want you to say a little bit, so yeah, there you go. (laughs) Okay, so I want you to say a little bit about why you think it's important. We're actually out of time, so maybe in a few seconds. What do you want me to say? Something about daily giving, about what, you know. I think daily giving is amazing. I'm saying if you could give a little bit of money to so many organizations at once, plus the way they do it, how they divide it up, it's it's a dream. It's a dream. It's like a virtual gamach for tzedakah, and we get so much schuyo so easily. If you're in a financial position, then this sounds like a, a dream for you. It's They're literally giving you on a silver platter an opportunity to do a mitzvah and help so many people. That's great. Okay, thank you so much for being with us. We have so many more. What can we do? We love you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Ladies, that what she said about not judging yourself, it's like, hello, that's what I, I need to internalize that like every day. I have to tell you this morning, I was, or when it was the last night, I was looking for my phone everywhere. I looked in my car and I'm looking in my car and I'm, I'm looking between the seats and behind the seats and I'm looking everywhere. And I realize what I'm looking with is my camera, uh, is my phone. <laughs> you know, hello. So don't judge yourself, right? Just everybody, that is the message of the day. Do not judge yourself. Do not feel bad about yourself for doing stupid things. Okay. We have the next guest. An inspirational speaker, so yummy. Everybody loves her. I mean, you see, say her name, it's like, oh, I love Jackie Beton. Okay, welcome to the show. We're so happy to have you. Come on, how does she come on? <laughs> there you are. Yay, Jackie. <laughs> Leia. Okay, first of all, I just have to say how humbled and how honored I am to be part of this extraordinary program. I mean, every single Torah personality that you have, besides being so inspirational. There's just such beautiful, beautiful people. And thank you, Hashem, that we're able to do this this evening. And by the way, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Jonathan Dona, who, by the way, is my chiropractor who started daily giving. Yes, he is unbelievable. And you should know after he once fixed a frozen shoulder of mine, okay, literally in two sessions, Hashem should bless him. I'm he, in, said, in. <laughs> he said to me in his office, I thank Hashem every single day for what I do because I get to help people but there's something that means more to me more than anything that I do. And it's this thing called daily giving. And from that one office visit, I said, one day, Hashem, please let me be Zoha to be part of this incredible program. So thank you, Hashem. <laughs> thank you to you, Leia. <laughs> wow, wow, that's awesome. Sorry. Okay, so and you're already here, forgiving me if I interrupt you because we already, she's sure. waving me down. She's got questions. Everybody else, type in. Sarit will give you questions right here, right now. So you're forgiving me for interrupting you. But I just yeah. want to start with so a little bit of Seder, a little bit of clarity. Please tell us what is small steps to greatness and what is greatness and how do people basically fulfill their potential? Gosh, it's a loaded question. In seven minutes, how am I going to say that? <laughs> Six. <laughs> That's already the <laughs> You know what? Um, there's actually two things that I think about. Number one, I feel like it is so vital to see other people. You know, my brother Tzvi told me a great line when I was in high school. He's like, Jax, you know, it's uh, the little things that make big people. And I think sometimes we get so consumed with like the daily grind of life and got to take care of this and that. And I'm just kind of rushing through, you know, to the next thing, to the next thing. And it's, it's sometimes we sort of lose sight of, hold on, there are other people in this world. And greatness is making sure that I make room for the people in my Dalit Amot, in my vicinity. Well, can you explain what you, what your brother said? I want to go back there for a second. I got so stuck on it. Sure. So gorgeous. Say it again. Yes. So Big. gorgeous. Say it again. Big. He said to me, Jax, it's the little things that make big people. And what does he mean, little things? What are the, and how do we do them? <laughs> it means like stopping in the middle of your day to notice somebody else. Hi. A good morning. I noticed. Thank you. Can I hold the door for you? Wow. Can I, can I carry back? Come on. You go in front of me. It's okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm in a little rush. You know, it's fine. Let your car go. Sure. It's, it's just small acts of kindness that we sort of do throughout our day that shows people that we notice them, you know? <laughs> yeah. Leah, I was, I was just thinking actually um, of a story this afternoon 
it was a number of years ago, I was going to Israel for my father's yurt site. It was his one year yurt site. So it's about seven years ago. And it was the hottest day in the entire year. My husband was so sad he couldn't come with me. He had to watch the rest of the kids. I was going for a very short time and I was going with my nursing baby at the time who unfortunately had crazy allergies. He takes me into JFK as much as he could before security stops us. JFK makes a crazy loud announcement that unfortunately the entire air conditioning system is out. It was so hot in the airport. I remember my wig <laughs> was like glued to my forehead. My mascara is melting off and my poor baby with allergies all of a sudden starts coughing and coughing. I'm now heading through the security line and she throws up all over me. I got the stroller. I got two baby bags, my lunch bag with the two salads that I am going to have on that plane. And the baby is throwing up everywhere. And then when did I finally start crying? when my brown paper bag holding those two delicious salads <laughs> from the salad dressing <laughs> leaked open and spilled all over. So you have to picture the scene, oh, oh, Jackie okay. Maton literally melting away, looking sweaty and gross with a screaming baby, two bags sort of dealing with the stroller now on the floor, taking my baby's wipes and cleaning up the salad that I wanted so badly. And I just started to cry. Now, why did I tell you this whole horror story? because not a single person came to help me. Not a single person. No one even said, oh my gosh, can I hold your baby? Let me just take your stroller for you. Oy, um, let me take that bag. And when I was down on the floor cleaning up tuna and like delicious lemon ginger dressing, I'm thinking to myself, are people just so cruel? Are people just so like self-centered and selfish? And then I looked up and I saw everybody around me on their phones. You got people like, you know, hi, we're leaving soon, going to security, swipe side, click, click, you know, on their little iPads, getting them stuff, you know, getting all their stuff through security. And I'm thinking to myself, no, people are not cruel. People just don't notice because they're in their own worlds. And I thought, what a tragedy to go through one's whole life without, without ever seeing the people around them. And right there on the floor <laughs> with the throw up and the salad dressing and the baby bags and the diapers and the wipes, I cried to Hashem right there in JFK. And I said, Hashem, please let me be a person who sees other people no matter what. Because a life where one is not giving, we're just merely surviving but a life of giving, which means seeing other people, no matter what level it is, something big, something small, I am making room for you. Now that's called living. So thanks for, thanks for listening. That was like a good therapy session for me. <laughs> oh my God. Jackie, people relate. There's actually someone who said, this happened to me in Evergreen Muncie. I was lying on the floor and no one stopped to see how I was doing. And it's literally because they just did not see her. Oh, right, God. right. So people are not bad. But the point is, if you want to be great, it starts with little things. Let me open my eyes. Let me look outside myself. Because only when I do, is there room to see other people. How do you shift from being the person in the in the airport who's doing a selfie to being a to being the how did you how did you do that yourself? How did you I mean, with God's help, you prayed to him, please let this happen. But then what <laughs> actions did you take that? I mean, how did you do that? That seems like such a hard thing. We're so caught up and so busy and frazzled. What a great question. I think it starts first without being so self-centered. Meaning like, I need to take care of myself because if I don't take care of myself, there is no ability that I can take care of anybody else around me. But I need to constantly remember that there are other people in this world. And I think if you genuinely want to see other people, meaning I'm opening my eyes, I'm online at the bank and yes, time is running out. I got to go do carpool, like, I don't know, 47 seconds. But let me just take a look. Maybe there's a mom who's sort of rolling by who would like, you know, some help with the door opening because she's putting, you know, pushing her stroller through. It's, it's very, very, it's really just sort of simple things to always make sure my eyes are open to the people around me. And when that is something very important to you, I always say, in a way that a person wants to go, God will take them. Hashem will help you be that person who sees other people. Amen. It's gorgeous. We have only time for one wow. question. And yeah. After you answer the question, we want to hear what 
Daily giving means to you. Okay, come in with a yes, question. Yes, firstly, today. Jackie, everyone loves you. With tons of hearts going across the screen. I'm going to give you a hard one because, you know, you can handle this. If Hashem sends a challenge, this is from Ellen Sutton, and you accept it by saying it hurts, but I know it's for the best, is it contradictory to then have moments when you cry and are sad about missing the good times that used to be before the challenge came? Does it mean that we don't truly accept oh. Hashem's judgment? Oh, I love that. Ellen, awesome. I hope you're feeling my hug through the phone because that is so healthy and that is so normal right like let's say for example i i very much talk about my brother bensi he was delicious and he was like my best friend he was nifter when i was 19 and a half and he was 18. do i accept fully Ratzon hashem that he fulfilled his mission and he's with Hashem. And in this world, there are no answers. In the next world, there are no questions. Of course. Am I living with him, Muna? Do I strive for it? Of course. Do I miss him every day of my life? Of course. Do I sometimes cry and feel very sad because he never met my kids or even my husband? Of course. And the two do not contradict one another. Feeling pain and experiencing struggle does not mean that I don't love you, Hashem, and I don't accept, and I'm not striving to be a person who lives with the moon and bitachon. It means that I'm human. And I feel like when we have moments of sadness and we have moments of anger, and we have moments of frustration, that's very healthy. I always say when I'm dealing with, you know, a student who's going through a hard time, I work with kids at risk and, and struggling. And I always say, I'm good with any emotion except for apathy. When a student's like, you know what? I don't care anymore. That's when I get worried. But when a person is angry and a person is fighting and a person is going through a hard time, that's good. You're feeling and you're alive. And that does not negate your desire for emuna bitachon. It just means you're human and you're beautiful and you're awesome. You know, Leah, I feel like we have four seconds left, but there was one other thing that I wanted to say. Okay, okay, okay. I wanted to say how important it is to be a Simcha Dika person. It's so important to be positive. We all know there's enough garbage in the world. We're in Gullis, there's enough craziness going on. And we so often feel like, oh my gosh, what's going on in this world out of control. We can always create this sort of like oasis of calm for ourselves and an island of, ah, for our family, if we're positive people. And I'm telling you that it starts with putting a smile on your face. Rebbe Tzipora Heller said many years ago, I heard this, if you smile, Hashem will always give you something to smile about. And I find that it's true Ooh, until it. you make it. I love that. I love it. Okay, tell us about daily giving. We've got to move on to the next thing. Okay. okay. So besides the fact that Dr. Jonathan is my favorite doctor <laughs> and best chiropractor, um, this sort of, I mean, this, this is all about what I was talking about at the beginning, seeing other people. You know, I hope that everybody's doing beautifully Parnassa wise. And I think that most people struggle, right? Like ups and downs. The reality is we need to feel for other people. We need to feel, and I'm telling you, it's, it's like the easiest mitzvah. It's a dollar a day that we're giving. And every single day we are making room for Hashem's children. It's totally, totally extraordinary. And the amount of lives that we're touching and the amount of neshamot that we're feeding and feeling is totally extraordinary. I'm telling you right now, as soon as I log off after this, I am signing up right away for daily giving. And I really hope all of my Jewish sisters watching tonight sign up with me. And Amrit Hashem, if we keep on seeing other people and try to be positive, Mashiach Tzidkenu should hopefully be here very soon. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Exactly. We, by the way, have so many people. Our viewers are really coming through. Um, so many people are donating and registering, and I just want to read a few more names. Keep it coming, because as much as these wonderful ladies are coming on, and we all love them, right? But Leon, all these ladies are here for one thing, daily giving. So yeah, keep those donations coming. Okay, so Kinsey Gross from Brooklyn. We've got Barbara Thanks. Reese from Comac, and Deborah Yazid from Brooklyn, and Barbara Rich from West Orange. Yay, welcome. Thank you, everybody. That's awesome. Okay, we've got to thank you very much, Jackie. It was awesome to have you. Uh, there's so what? many things that really, you gave me some real, real gifts. But that story of the airport is going to stay in my head. I know. I'm going to look <laughs> around, look around. Thanks for being with us. Okay, we have a great, uh, we've got a world debut of the daily giving video. It's three minutes long, I think. I don't, uh, whatever. So watch this video, and then we're going to have 
jo Jonathan Donat coming on. Uh, and after that, we've got Yamima Mizrahi coming right up. Okay, I have a life hack for you. You should just do this now. Trust me, you're gonna thank me later. I wanted to take this opportunity to share with you something extraordinary. Literally everybody is talking about dailygiving.org. Even a dollar a day can make a huge impact. With dailygiving.org, you sign up once, you set it, and you forget it. Every single individual gives half a shekel, the rich and the poor, because everyone together is a part in making the change. And it always bothered me. How come we don't have half a shekel concept today? And then I was introduced to something amazing called dailygiving.org. A dollar doesn't really go very far in the current market. Lots of times you give a dollar to this, a dollar to that, and it doesn't really feel like it's making a big impact. But when you give it together as a community, it has a really meaningful impact. A hundred percent of every dollar you give every day goes to help these organizations. We're loading up another truck with groceries to the elderly. We're able to provide services for over 50 families with kids with special needs and intellectual disabilities this summer due to the generosity, support, partnership and friendship of everybody at Daily Giving. This is equipment that is crucial for saving lives. We wouldn't have had all this without support from Daily Giving. You could see every day who's getting the money, how much they're getting, and you can go back to the very beginning when we started and see every day who got the money, and you see the dollars growing as more people sign up and more people sign up and we get more momentum. To give a dollar a day is not asking too much, and if you can do it, you'll be able to give me some. It's like Cloud Israel's one big giant virtual tzedakah box, and they take care of your donation and they make sure it goes to extremely worthy causes. You have ranging from couples suffering with infertility to women with breast cancer to uh, people suffering from poverty that need help with food and living accommodations. They've helped people that I know very well to supply food for them and to help them make chasanas for their children. It's so important that we're givers. It's so important that we are always flexing the giving muscle. And no matter what's going on, every single day I know that I've given something. It's the one email I always read. It makes me feel like I actually gave that day. I'm not that old, but I remember the days that you can get a slice of pizza for a dollar. Today, what can you get for a dollar? But when you put all of our dollars together, all of a sudden the dollar becomes huge. Umar has an expression called pruta pruta mitzdarefes lechesh bin gadol. When it comes to tzedakah, every penny counts. One of my daughters actually today asked me, I have to give my tzedakah. Can I give to daily giving? It's not necessarily years worth, but can I give a few months worth? And you know, to me that was, it was, it made me happy. This is not instead of giving to other organizations. We want everybody to try to give one extra dollar a day together. And that's how we can have a massive, massive impact. So that is your life hack. Go now to dailygiving.org, sign up. You're gonna get those emails. They're gonna make your day. You put me into quarantine and I did better. I can't touch another person, yet I'm touching thousands at a time. Go check it online right now. Look at the calendar and you will see every dollar that's given goes directly to another organization. How do you get the biggest bang out of your buck, out of your dollar? It's called dailygiving.org. Yay. Okay. Now we have Jonathan. We only have a, a couple of minutes for uh, Dr. Do Jonathan Donath, who is the original founder of Daily Grieving. He, this, he, this, he started this in his, in his spare time. He does not get paid. No money goes to this man. All of it goes to the people, the recipients. So first of all, welcome. So thrilled to have you on. It's just an honor to be part of this whole thing. Thank you very much, Leah, for having me. Thank you for all the hard work that went in behind the scenes to this. I really appreciate all your hard work. That's great. So tell me, we just want to know, what are your favorite things about daily giving? Why did you, I mean, it's such an amazing concept. So tell us your favorite things about daily giving. Okay, so first of all, after all these speakers, I'm humbled that they're all said yes to be on our, our show tonight. And uh, the show just took like a thousand times step down because I'm not a professional speaker like all these ladies. So now is the time. If you were inspired by that video and you want to sign up for daily giving, now is the time because you're not going to miss anything. I'm just going to uh, say a couple things. Okay. 
<laughs> so I just want to say, um, when I when I talk to someone about daily giving, and I send to let's say a speaker who's going to talk about daily giving, I send them like sixteen talking points. So when you say what's your favorite, I'm going to try really quickly to say my three favorite things. Okay. Number one is why we start in the first place to get a mitzvah every single day. I just read the Shabbos. Uh, I opened up Torah anytime. One of our beneficiary organizations has a has a really great. If you don't get it, it's a weekly um, flyer you can print out at your Shabbos meal called the Torah Anytime. And it, it was one, uh, a Dvar Torah for one of my friends, Rabbi Itil Govich, the founder of Eishat Torah Israel. And he said in it that when he was a child, his father, Rabbi Meir Govich, who happened to be my rub, my rub in, in YU, when I was in YU, um, he gave him $10 for doing something when he did something really well as a kid. And he took that opportunity to teach him about master, to give 10%. So he said, we have to take one of these dollars and give to tzedakah. So he did that. So he said to, to Itil as a child, he said, so how many dollars do you have left? And he says, nine. He says, no, you have $1 left. He says, no, I have nine. He says, well, you might right now, but a week from now, your $9 will have been spent on candy and pizza and something else, but you'll still have $1 left because the dollar you give to tzedakah will be, will be the, for you forever. Okay. And so when you sign up for daily giving, you're going to sign up for one second. It's take one click of a button. You're going to pay either $30 a month or yearly, and you're not going to think about it. And every day we give your dollar on behalf of you as, as your shaliach, as your messenger, every single day to a different organization. You get an email telling you where your money's going. You learn about the organizations. And that's it. For the rest of you, you're going to get 365 mitzvahs a day. You're going to wake up every single morning. It's one nothing you before you wake up. <laughs> and that's one, one thing I love about daily giving. The second thing is, is achthus. The fact that I see more than other people, but like this morning, someone signed up from Switzerland. And the other day, someone signed up for $18 a day from Austria. And we have people that signed up from over 30 countries in the world. And the reasons they say they signed up, this actually, that reminds me, actually, just before we came on the show, someone named Deidre Kadek from Passaic, New Jersey, signed up. Her, her mother's yurt site was today. And she signed up, So I just want to say that. And also today, uh, one of our daily givers added another dollar to their already dollar a day to, uh, for a full shlema, for a full shlema, for a full hour on a coin, Ben Rivka. So these are some of the things we see, the actors of people signing up from all over the world and for different purposes. And the third thing that I think is incredible about daily giving is the diversified portfolio of charities we give to. So for your $1 a day, we are giving to so many different organizations from such a wide gamut of, of, needy, of needy things um, that you know we always get those envelopes in the mail and you feel like kind of guilty, you can't give to everyone. Um, but this is a way we could really, you know, for one dollar, you could really reach out, and, and together we give millions and millions of dollars to all these organizations. Tell the one about the ma the married guy. The, I thought you were going to tell. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, okay. There, there was there was one woman who uh, originally when we signed up two and a half years ago, I sent an email to my five hundred closest friends about daily giving, and a bunch <laughs> of them signed up right from the beginning. And then, like eight months later, um, a close friend of the family she signed up, and for two dollars a day, she was a single woman, maybe about 35, 36, 37 years old. And I, and I reached out to her. I said, thank you so much for signing up. I was just, just curious. I know I told you about this a long time ago. What made you decide now? Because I'm just curious what takes people. Everyone loves the idea. Um, but, but, but if you don't sign up right now, if you think, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it later, you're just not going to do it later. We've seen this for two and a half years. We should have 50000 we should, we, should, we should be giving $100,000 a day. There's 8,150 people registered for this event tonight. We're very humble, by the way. That's an incredible number of people that register. That's households. There's more people watching um, for this event. And if you don't sign up now, if you think it's a good idea, that's what I just want to urge you. I want to urge you to sign up now. You can always stop if you don't want to give, you'll, but you'll see. With the feedback we get is incredible. The people that sign up love being a part I'm of it. About to say. <laughs> okay, so she signed up for $2 a day, and she said she just forgot. She just simply forgot, and she signed up for $2 a day, and she said $1 for her and $1 for her future husband. And she is now, it's not even a year and a half later, during COVID, she got married a couple months ago. And that's my story. So that, that is that's a true my story. Favorite daily giving. That's my favorite daily giving story. I absolutely love it. That's so fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. This it's really, really it, to create this whole thing and what you do. You should be continued to be benched in all of the work that you do. It's it's gorgeous. And now we're all part of it. Okay, fine. Thank, Thank you, you for being on, Jonathan. Okay, very good. So we are going to now go.